Hey there, welcome back to my kitchen. Today's video is kind of fun. We're gonna be using some tater tots to make three really delicious recipes. I have some really great ideas for you that I think you're really going to enjoy. So let's go ahead and get started and I will show you how to make them. First off today, we're gonna start with an appetizer and make these loaded tater tot skewers. First thing I'm doing is just going to go ahead and preheat the oven to 400 degrees and then onto my trusty little baking pan right here. I know it looks bad, but it never burns anything and I love it. So we're gonna go ahead and make these tater tots on here. You will need to count these tater tots. I am going to be using five tater tots per skewer. I'm planning on making eight skewers, so I do have about 40 tater tots here. It's not a bad idea to make a couple extra on there though, just in case one or two break. While those tater tots are in the oven, over in my skillet, I'm gonna go ahead and cook up a couple pieces of bacon. You really do not need to go overboard with this bacon. I only have two and a half pieces of bacon here. You could probably make it with two slices. You could also just use bacon bits if you want, but personally, I think that fresh bacon is better. So here are my tater tots after coming out of the oven. I did just go ahead and follow the instructions on the back of the bag for those. And then I'm just going to scoot them all to one side of my pan and bring in a piece of parchment paper. Here is my skewer. I actually went ahead and cut my larger skewers in half to make them this nice smaller size. And then for each one of these, I'm just going to go ahead and add on five tater tots. Try to line them up so they're all nice and straight in a row. Once they're on the skewer, go ahead and lay that onto your parchment paper. And we're just gonna work that parchment paper onto this pan as we use the tater tots up. Now that these are all laid out and ready to go, I'm going to add a little bit of shredded cheddar cheese over top of each one. And then once your bacon cools down, you will want to chop that up as well. And then you will just add the bacon over top of the cheese. If you have a lot of excess on your pan like I did here, try to pick some of that up and add it on top of the tater tots. But if you don't get it all completely on there, it's okay, not a big deal. I put those in my oven for about five to seven minutes to melt the cheese. I also quickly wanted to show you what I made to go along with this. So I took some of this cheddar broccoli noir. I went ahead and made that in the front and then I also cooked up some broccoli back here in the back and I'm just going to mix those together to make a nice cheesy broccoli pasta. Here is what my finished plate looked like. As you can see that side dish there, I just went ahead and mixed those both together and added a pinch of cheese in there to make it extra cheesy. For the tater tot skewers, I like to have some sour cream on the side to dip them in. I know that looks like a ton of sour cream, but I love to dip these pretty heavy in the sour cream. But overall, these are such a fun little side dish or appetizer you can make. And I think the kids will really love them just because they're a little different and also easy to eat. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and make this ham and cheese tater tot casserole. This is perfect for breakfast or breakfast for dinner. I'm just preheating my oven to 350 degrees and then also chopping up half of a green pepper. You can leave these in bigger pieces or cut them up really small. I personally like them to be nice and small.
And then you will also need one ham steak or you can just use a package of diced ham, but I think that the ham steaks are just a lot better. Cut that ham steak up however you like. I like to cut those also into nice tiny pieces. I think it makes it stretch a lot further. Once I had those both cut up, I went ahead and added them into a nice big bowl and I'm also going to add in four eggs, half a cup of milk, one cup of shredded mild cheddar cheese, about a fourth teaspoon of pepper, and a fourth teaspoon of salt, a fourth teaspoon of garlic powder, and about two to three tablespoons of sour cream. Get this mixed together so that everything is nicely combined and then we're going to transfer it over into a casserole dish. Tonight I'm just using an 8x8 casserole dish and spraying down the edges to make sure that the egg does not stick while cooking. And then you'll just want to dump the entire bowl in there. Next, you're just going to take some tater tots and create an even layer over the top of this egg mixture. It doesn't really matter how much of these you use, just make sure to pack them in there on top really tightly and make a nice top layer. Now you can go ahead and put this in your oven and let this bake for about 45 minutes to an hour. Personally, mine took about 50 minutes to get all the way done. To check and make sure that everything is cooked all the way through, I just take a fork and just very lightly poke the center of the casserole to make sure that the egg is fully cooked. If it's still liquidy, you need to put it back in the oven for a few minutes, but if it's nice and firm, then it's good to go. Over the top, I'm just going to take a little bit more of that shredded mild cheddar cheese, about a half cup to a cup, your preference. Cover the top of that and then stick it back in the oven for about five minutes. Here's what it looks like coming out of the oven. And then over the top, once it does come out of the oven, you will want to sprinkle on there a little bit of chives. Here is my finished bowl. We like to top ours with a little extra sour cream and also a little bit of hot sauce is actually really good on here as well. This meal is pretty filling but also will keep you satisfied for a long time in the morning. Recently, me and my husband have been enjoying Domino's Pizza and we really like their loaded tater tots there, so today we're going to be making a copycat version of the Philly cheesesteak one. To begin, I went ahead and preheated my oven to 400 degrees. Now over to my baking tray, I'm just going to add about 32 ounces of tater tots. I was a little bit short, I had just under 32 ounces, but that's okay honestly, it's not going to make a huge difference. Once I had those all on my tray, I went ahead and stuck those in the oven and baked those according to the bag directions. While those are in the oven, we're going to get started up here on the stove top. I'm just using a cast iron skillet today, adding in a little bit of avocado oil in there. And you will also need one of these big packages of beef shaved steak. This package is pretty big, so I went ahead and cooked this steak into two batches. This will also help keep it from getting overly watery and also help get some of the edges a little crispy. I realize now watching this back that I did not record myself adding seasoning to the steak, but you will just lightly want to sprinkle that with some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Do not go overboard, you just need a little bit of seasoning. Once you cook the first batch, go ahead and add the second batch in there and just repeat that whole process. 
While the steak is cooking, I am just going to go ahead and cut up one yellow onion into slices and then also one green bell pepper into slices as well. And I did not show, but I actually cut those green peppers in half as well just to make them a little bit smaller. And now that the steak is all done, I added it all over into the bowl. And then into the skillet, added a little bit more avocado oil. And then now we're gonna cook the peppers and onions in here. Lightly sprinkle them with a little bit of salt, pepper, and garlic powder. After about 10 minutes or so, your peppers and onions should be tender. You can go ahead and remove those out of the pan and into a bowl as well. Once the tater tots are done and your skillet is empty, go ahead and add all of the tater tots in there. If you have a cast iron skillet, I would definitely recommend using that for this recipe, but also an oven safe skillet will work as well. And if you don't have either of those, then you can just use a baking tray and add everything on top of the tater tots there. But I like to use this cast iron skillet because it does have these edges which help prevent anything from spilling out. Once the tater tots are even in the pan, I am going to take some Alfredo sauce. You can just use some store brand Alfredo. And I'm adding about half of that container of Alfredo over top of these tater tots. Next, you will take all of your steak and spread that evenly over the top. And then you will take the peppers and onions and add those over top of the steak. Last but not least, we're gonna add some cheese over the top. So I'm just sprinkling over about three fourths of a cup of mozzarella cheese, along with about three fourths of a cup of shredded mild cheddar. And then last thing I'm going to do before adding this into the oven is just sprinkle this with a little bit of parsley over the top of the cheese. That way it can kind of melt down into the cheese in the oven. Put this back into your oven and let it go for about 15 to 20 minutes to allow everything to warm back up and let the cheese melt over the top. I know this doesn't look pretty, but this is what my finished bowl looked like. The Alfredo sauce, all the cheese, and the steak, it's delicious all together. This is another one of those meals that is extremely filling. And if you order this same thing at Domino's, they only give you a small amount. But if you make it at home like this and you have a ton of it, you can eat it as a meal. And we even had leftovers for the next day. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I really appreciate you being here. Don't forget to leave me a flower down below in the comments if you did make it all the way to the end of today's video. And I will see you back here on Sunday with a new one. Bye.